Welcome to the end, friend. What is up guys, Chris05 with another card review video here. First off, I wanna thank all of you guys. The channel reached 1000 subs in less than 90 days and I wanna say a huge thank you to all of you. Thanks for watching and liking my content. I will do my best to keep it coming, but for now, let's move on to the video. 16 cars got released since my last video and like last time, I will review only the 5 best cars from the bunch and I will also do a quick rating for the rest of the cards. Starting off with the priest legendary Camellios. Now this is interesting. This dude can bring a ton of value and if you're lucky enough to draw him in your early turns or even mulligan it, it's gonna be like you're stream sniping your opponent. Don't mind that it's a 1-1 card, it could have been a 0-0 for all I care. The effect it has will be huge versus control as well as aggro decks. You will definitely want to know if the paladin against you has a tarim waiting in his hand. You can imagine how strong this will be and I'm pretty sure this will see a lot of competitive play. Having information about your opponent's hand is crucial especially in high level play on ladder or on tournaments. And as if that wasn't enough, you get to play a copy of the card you actually like from your opponent's cards. Some really interesting combinations might pop up when you combine cards from two classes. My rating for this guy will be 5 stars, since there is just too much value here. Now let's look at the rare neutral beast, Witchwood Grizzly. I guess aggro decks are in for some bad news. This 5 drop taunt can potentially be a free 9 or a free 10, most of the time it is played against aggro. Versus control this guy will not be so effective since they tend to stack a lot of cards in their hand and a free 5 or a free 6 will not be worth it. That being said, he will really be a meta dependent card. Aside from that, you can imagine what zombie Shrekstar will be able to pull off with this one. Also Master Oakheart can draw it for free with free 12 stats for some amazing value but I'm not convinced that combo will be used in competitive play. My rating for this bear will be barely 4 stars. Sorry, I couldn't resist. It has potential and we might see it in play a lot soon. Continuing with Coffin Crasher. This rare priest 6 drop minion has solid stats for its cost and a great death rattle to go with it. It has a slim chance to bring quest priest back in the meta again, but since Nzat is rotating out, that will hurt the archetype a lot. Also, with its effect you can cheat out obsidian statues as soon as turn 6 or 7, not that priests weren't able to do that before turn 5 with big priest, but still. It has good value to it, but I'm not convinced it will be enough to see it in competitive decks. That's the reason I'm only giving it 3 stars. The warrior legendary minion Blackhawk Gunspire is up next. I'll do a review of this card not because it is so good, but because the rest of the cards are even worse. Now I know a lot of you guys think that this card is horrible and you might be right, but hear me out here. I think this actually has a chance to fit in into Fatigue Taunt Warrior. If you are able to stick this guy for one turn, which shouldn't be that much of a problem since you will have a ton of taunts by turn 7 and if your opponent doesn't have a hard removal for it, he will be in for some trouble. Warrior already runs so many cards with which he can deal 1 damage to this thing repeatedly, like Whirlwind, Warpath, Bloodraiser and Death Knight's Hero Power. And imagine if you are able to slap a sudden Genesis to it. You will be able to wreak some real havoc with it, but in reality this combo will be hard to pull off. I'll give this card the benefit of the doubt and rate it with 3 stars. Even though it's not an amazing standalone card, it might find its way in the meta. And last but not least, Lady in White. I want to finish off this top 5 with some thoughts about Lady in White. I feel like this card is way overrated. Yeah, it's a nice card, but not anywhere near as most people think. First of all, you have to draw it. And second, it's a 6 drop, so you'll have to wait for turn 6 to even have the chance to play it. Third, it buffs the minions in your deck, so you have to draw those so you can actually play something that got buffed. It's a lot like Prince Keleset, but with the added disadvantage of having to build your deck with specific low attack high health minions for it. It might fit into some control oriented decks that will want to prolong the game as much as possible, but I'm not sure it will be worth it to revolve your deck around it heavily. 
There are quite a few popular low attack high health minions that priests tend to run, like Doomsayer, Dark Reaper, Obsidian Statue, Maligos and Acera, but I'm still not convinced that this card will bring enough value to the board. That is why I give this card only 3 stars. I know a lot of you might disagree with me on this one, but I think you will see it the same way in a few weeks. So these were the 5 best cards from the last few days, let's move down to the quick rating segment. I am giving these cards 3 stars. Some of them might find place in competitive decks, but for now they don't look too hot. Hunter got a poor excuse for a legendary again, I don't think we will see a serious control hunter deck and for me this will definitely be a meme card. Darius Crawley seems ok, but I'm not sure he will do much for warrior. He looks fun, but there are just too much removals for him to work. And for these I'm gonna have to go with 2 stars. I will be surprised if I see any of those in competitive play. So that's about it for the new cards guys. This batch definitely had lower quality cards than the last one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris05 and I'll see you in my next video.